Good morning. How many of you have heard of Digital Citizenship Week? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Hey, awesome. It was actually last week, but we had a lot of homecoming stuff going on. So this week we are going to have a set of three chapel talks. This is the first one talking a little bit about our screens and websites and apps and the ways in which we use them. And today I'm going to kick it off by challenging you to think about social media as a game. Tomorrow, Brandon Crosno, who is a Cassidy graduate, a uh, graduate of Oklahoma State University, and he is now our manager of, I think, online community. He has a special title, but he's a social media guy. You see him all the time with his camera. Uh, Mr. Foster also you know, helps with that a lot. Those members of our staff are using technology and social media, and so he's gonna talk tomorrow about what he remembers when he was sitting in your pew when he was in the middle division and when he was in upper division and then what that was like in college and what he has been doing with technology since. And then the last day on Friday, Dr. Baca McKinney and I are gonna talk a little bit about screen time. But today, if you had your phone, I would have you get it out. I just shared this with upper division. A lot of them have their phones and so uh, I'm gonna show you the results of some polls that I sent for them. How many of you have been to a Cassidy Sports event this year that you were not competing in you went to watch all right great hands down how many people took a picture at one of those events did anybody take a picture all right look at that more hands put your hands down so social media is a lot of different things and it's not just about competition okay but i bet you've heard stories of people losing at social media like making some pretty dumb choices and I'm not going to talk about a lot of those today. I'm going to focus on positive. But my point is we can use our cameras, we can use our technology to really tell stories and show some great things. Um, on the flip side, we could also use these to do negative things, right? To bully people or to, to take pictures of things we shouldn't take pictures of. And today I'm not here to say technology is bad or social media is bad. That's just my opinion. Other people have other opinions. I believe technology and social media are really important parts of the way we live, right? When I don't have my phone today, I kind of feel like I'm not complete. I'm kind of naked. Uh, I don't have my phone. Where's my phone? I get really scared sometimes, which is silly, right? But I use it all the time, and it's really important to me. It's important to my job, too, because part of what, what I do is help, you know, hopefully make sure our technology works at school. So today, is anybody here thinking about college, by the way? My wife teaches third grade, right? And she was listening at lunch yesterday to some of her students talk about where they wanted to go to college and who was gonna get in where and who was gonna get into Stanford. And it was like kind of crazy. It starts early, right? But thinking about college is a good thing, but there are other things that are even bigger and more important to think about. Like, what do you wanna do in your life? Like, you wanna go to college, but what do you wanna do with an education at college. And so I want us to think about what we wanna do and where we wanna go. And part of our job as your teachers and your, the adults in your life at school is hopefully to help you learn how to use technology so that you win with it and you get to go where you wanna go. You get to do what you wanna do. So if you had your phone and we're just, this is an upper division thing, it's okay. Um, I just pulled them in their chapel and I asked if you could have one app on your phone would you choose Snapchat or Instagram or YouTube or Netflix or something else? All right. And about a hundred or so uh, responded and it was almost an equal Snapchat and YouTube. I kind of thought Instagram would be a little higher. Um, those are small numbers, but basically 116 of them responded on their phone. Um, they had a chance to either uh, text message their answer. So 64 text me texted in and 52 used the web. Here was the second question. How often do you delete a post or a photo because it doesn't have enough likes? Have y'all ever heard of that before? You ever heard of somebody doing that? Okay, you don't have to raise your hand, but I asked them to raise their hands. Some of them raised their hands, but, but look at the responses. Most of them said they hadn't, but quite a few, 13% said about once a month, I delete a post because it hasn't gotten enough likes. And maybe, you know, not maybe, some of them said once per week and more than once a week. Here's the numbers. So um, 18 of our upper division students who responded, this is only about a third that were responding, 
But 18 said once a month they delete a post, and four do that more than once a week, and then three once a week. So here's the thing. Social media is very new, all right? When Father Humans was in school, when Ms. Vedlitz, when Mr. Bottomley, when I was in school, we did not have a phone in our pocket, all right? And we did not have this thing called the internet that connected us all together. And so social media, as you think about, and I'm not saying you've got to use it, and I'm, how, how old are you supposed to be, by the way, before you have a Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram? You know the magical age? You're close, you're very close. 13, okay, 13 is the magic, um, the magic number. And if you set up an account before you're 13, um, my daughter who graduated, she's 18 now, she learned you, you, if you go back and change your age and, and basically let Twitter know that you've not told the truth about your age, they deactivate your account. That happened to her actually when she turned 18. It's a good thing to wait till you're 13, all right? But if you want to use social media, and like is anybody here playing Minecraft? Is anybody playing Roblox? Is anybody playing, we're not gonna talk in depth about it, but Fortnite? Yeah, okay, we're gonna talk some more about that. Um, you have chances to interact, right? And so social media, um, I would encourage you to think of as less about likes and attention and more about connecting with your tribe. And what do I mean by tribe? Like, what are you really passionate about? What do you love? Social media, for me also, and I, and I would say for you too, is about aspirational identity, all right? So if I was to ask, and I won't put him on the spot here, but if I was to ask Mr. Bottomley, who are you, Mr. Bottomley? Tell me in 140 characters, who are you? Uh, that's a challenge, right? When I was in school, I didn't have an opportunity or any pressure to do that. You might look at me and say, oh, look at Dr. Fryer. He's an adult and he's wearing a suit. He knows exactly who he is and he's known who he is forever. Let me tell you, I am continuing to figure out who I am and, and what it is that I want to do. And so on social media, I have an opportunity, and you do as well, to tell the world not just who you are today, but who do you want to be? What issues are really driving you? What are you passionate about? And you also can connect with people who are passionate. And so that's been a very cool thing for me to be able to connect to other teachers and educators, for instance, who love to use technology but want to use it well and want to use it to really enhance learning. So I'm going to show you a quick video, this is just two minutes, and it's from a group called the Social Institute. And I want you to think about, as you watch this video, what would it mean for you to win at social media, all right? What graduating years do we have here? Eighth graders, you're graduating what year? 2021, okay? And fifth graders, when are you graduating? 2026, all right, so anywhere between 2021, 2026, am I saying that right? 2023, 2023. three, right, because my daughter's ninth grade, she's 2022, I should know all this. Think about, all right, when you graduate from Cassidy, if you're gonna win at social media, what does it look like? And let's uh, take a look at this short little video. What if I told you I'm part of the biggest team in the world? But you've never heard of us. We like and post, snap and share. We're the texters, the grammars, the go-getters of this generation. Our team doesn't win through points and touchdowns. Our field is our phone, and we win by using it for good. What if I told you our devices are our voices, and we use them to do great things, to spark movements, to follow role models, to share our strengths? Parents call it social media. We call it being social. What if I told you that our team needs coaches, role models to help fill our feeds, who use their devices for good? Friends, parents, teachers, leaders, show us your best moves. Everyone tells us the don'ts. Don't post this, don't share that. Teach us the do's, how to deal with bullying, who to friend and who to block, when to put our phones away. Help us play our A games. What if I asked you to join our team? Because you can. You have the power to control your device instead of letting it control you. You too can turn it on and turn it up to spread good over hate, to download so you can uplift, to cyber back those who are cyber bullied, to strengthen your reputation, to represent something bigger than you. 
You change our world for the better. One post, one snap, one text at a time. We, 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 we are the biggest team in the world. And we're only growing. Are, are you, you with us? us? All right, so that is a pretty, I think, interesting way of looking at social media. And it's, you know, not the whole story. There's a lot of sides to it, but I think that's an important story. Anybody follow Taylor Swift at all? Like, anybody interested in that? You know what, she's been like controversial lately. You know what she's been doing on Instagram? If you look at her profile, what, is it, what does it say on her profile? The old Taylor Swift can't come to the phone right now. And it says vote.org, early voting. What's she trying to tell all her 112 million followers? Get out and vote. These midterm elections coming up in the United States are a big deal. And some people have actually been upset at her. Now, who's somebody who's been upset at Taylor for quite a while? Do you know her name? She's a singer. You kind of might have seen her at the Super Bowl. Katy Perry, right? So this week, uh, Katy Perry has made news praising Taylor Swift for being a role model and speaking out about political things. Now, this is controversial. And the question, the last poll I had for Upper Division today was, should entertainment celebrities post political opinions on social media? We could talk about Kobe, okay, basketball, KD. We could talk about a lot of different people who have had some controversial posts. Uh, about two-thirds of our Upper Division students said yes, they thought so, but some said no and some weren't sure. And so those were the results, 143 uh, total responded. Um, but, you know, the majority of them said yes. This isn't just about celebrities, though, okay? Do you guys know Sugar the Overlord? Like, okay, I won't have you raise your hand. Ms. Titus has raised her hand. She knows, okay? This is not just about celebrities. This is also about how we're going to share. And please do not misunderstand me. I am not saying to you today, whether you're in fifth grade or eighth grade, you need to be on Instagram. I'm not saying that. But I know a lot of you are, and a lot of you will choose to be or you're playing Roblox, or you're playing Fortnite, or you know, you're doing different interactive things. And so think about this. When you share something publicly, you and I need to think like a celebrity. Because if I tweet something right now, and it's public, who gets to see that? Anybody. So anything that you share or I share could be on the front page of the Daily Oklahoman. It could be on the New York Times. It could be national, international news. We represent, all right? I see a lot of Cassidy shirts out there, right? I've got my Cassidy badge on. When I share something, when Miss Titus shares something, we do represent. And so we need to think before we post, and we need to consider who is going to see it and what they're going to think about us and what we represent. So here's my challenge to kind of wrap up. Uh, this is a great time for all of us, even the adults, to clean up our digital footprint. Our digital footprint is what we leave when we are online. And so, have you Googled yourself? Ever done that? Teachers, have we done that recently? Okay, we should do that, okay? Now, somebody else may have your name, and they may already have a website, and you know, some things we're not gonna be able to change, but we need to see that, and there may not be anything online, and that's, that may be fine. But at some point, you might want to have control over that, and so thinking about what you share and what people find about you, you have some control over. Check your privacy settings. If you haven't looked at your Facebook privacy settings, please do that. There's a lot of stuff going on with Facebook and social media. Uh, no, most kids are not on Facebook. You're on uh, Instagram or, or Snapchat or something else. Um, use a strong password, okay? Uh, should you tell your password to your friends? Should you use the same password all the time? No, you should actually use a password manager like LastPass and use a different password. I know it's hard, but this is th the world of hacking. Update your software. Maintain your device, okay? You may have to help your parents with this. You may help your teacher with it. Why do I want to keep my phone updated and not run super old software? What can people do to my device if I'm running old stuff that hasn't been fixed? Watch this. Exactly right. It stops viruses, it stops malware, it stops bad stuff, and there's different ways that that happens, right? And so updating, think before you post, build a positive reputation.
okay? It starts early, and we want you guys to win at social media. So, last two things. These are articles from this week. Yesterday, New York Times announced that for the first time publicly, the United States has launched offensive cyber attacks against individuals in Russia seeking to disrupt our election. What the heck is going on? Can you believe that there are people in other countries that want us to hate each other? They want us to be angry. They want us to be split up into different groups so that we're not unified and so that in, in some cases we won't vote. I read this article and I'm actually glad. I am glad that our country, because there's a war going on now if you didn't know it, and social media is one place where that war is taking place. So we need you actually to not only represent your family and Cassidy well, we need you to be active on the world stage. And it may not be working for the US Air Force or the National Security Agency or the CIA or whoever is doing cyber operations, but it may be for a cause that you care about. And so this is my last point. If you've been paying attention to the news, you've probably heard the name Jamal Khashoggi. He is a Saudi Arabian national, meaning he is a citizen, he was a citizen of Saudi Arabia. He was living in the United States. He was working for a newspaper called the Washington Post, and he was about to get married, and so in Turkey, he was going to the consulate of Saudi Arabia to get documents so that he could be married. And he was just, in the last week, killed and dismembered by a security team that was sent there um, the United States now says, and others say, from Saudi Arabia. Do you know that you and I could be put in jail and prison today in Saudi Arabia for a tweet? Okay, People are in prison right now in Saudi Arabia for things that they have tweeted. And so to say this and end with this, remember that freedom of expression, Okay, our ability to say what we believe and what we care about, that's not a value every government and everybody has. Our voices matter. Your voice matters. But we want to help you make good choices. Because, like I said, anything we say or share, it can go viral. It can go worldwide. And so we want to use our voices, hopefully, to support each other, to cyber back each other, and to hopefully win at social media, to do what we want to do, and to go where we want to go. So thank you all for your attention today. And... We're going to keep on walking through this journey together. Thanks. Please stand. Uh, teachers and students, let me encourage you to talk about this today, whether it's in class, advisory, lunch tables, uh, kids amongst yourselves. Let's keep it in our minds. Let us bless the Lord.